Look, we're losing $10.78 per acre on that row. This can be a bit confusing until you understand what you're looking at. All right, as I promised at the end of the last video, I'm gonna explain to you what is all going on with all these controllers here in the cab. Hey there, thanks for turning down my road. If this is your first time here, my name's Carl. My little brother and I both work for local farmers full time, but we both also farm together with our cattle herd and our hay operation. If you don't have the joy of farming yourself, I'd love to help you experience it through this channel. Whatever your background, you found the right place. This is Dodge Brothers Farm and Ranch. You're gonna have to excuse me because for some reason I'm sort of losing my voice. It's all raspy, I don't really know why. I kind of have a little bit of a cold. Pretty sure it's not coronavirus but if you want to put a mask on while you watch this that's up to you let's start with the simple stuff honestly it's all really simple once you kind of get a feel for it and understand what's happening here right here we have two identical clean sweep controllers i've been asked by a few people why i have two in the cab this year these are pressure controllers for the air pressure that pushes down and lifts on the row cleaners that run out ahead of the rows. And the reason that I have two separate controllers, this is the controller that we've always had in here, and it is hooked up to the air on all of the Martin Till row cleaners. This is a controller that I just put in this spring, and it is only hooked up to control the two reveal row cleaners. If you don't know what I'm talking about, go watch the last video from just a few days ago, and I'm gonna explain in that video what's going on there. This is just showing the pressure in the air tank, that little black air tank on the air compressor out on the tongue. If I want to push down harder on these row cleaners, all I need to do is move this lever over into the downside. Now, if I wanna not run them quite as aggressively, I can run them over to the lift side and you can see they're just barely tickling the surface right now. If I lift them hard enough, look at that, they come all the way up and they won't even be turning anymore. Um, I can do that also here with this. If I put enough lift on those row cleaners, they will all lift up as well, and they're not even touching the ground anymore. So I just wanted to be able to control these two separately this year because I didn't know how the reveal system was gonna work. I figured they would probably require a little bit different amounts of pressure to lift them. So that's why I have two of those. This air pressure controller is hooked up to the furrow force. Those two rows that have the different closing system on the back, this is what fills that airbag to put down pressure on the second stage of that closing system to press down with those rubber wheels. So if I don't think I'm getting quite all of the air pockets out and I'm not sealing it enough, I can just push this lever down and I can add air pressure to those bags or control this from the cab. Furrow force can be a totally automated system just like the downforce system, Delta Force, that we'll talk about in just a little bit and how that works. You can run it through a Generation 3 2020 display. You can have that control the down pressure automatically on the second stage wheels. You can have it sense how much weight those wheels are feeling, how much they're carrying, and it will adjust that automatically, but you don't have to. Now, this is something that I didn't understand before I started this demo with these two furrow force rows, and a lot of people don't understand. You don't have to even have 2020 display or an iPad or anything in your tractor, you can just have the air compressor and this little controller right here and set them manually like I am. You do have to manage it just a little bit more. You want to make sure you're getting out and checking if you're doing a good job, adjusting your air pressure accordingly. Okay, moving on. This black box right here controls the folding functions for the planter. It also controls the markers. Now watch this. Hit the left button. So when we put the marker down and make a mark, this is actually how we used to drive the planter straight before we used GPS to auto steer the tractor. So you'd strike this mark out, it's exactly half the width of the planter. So then when you turn around at the end of the field to come back, you line the center of your tractor up with that mark. And that is how you keep your spacing equal if you don't use GPS for driving the tractor to plant. Okay, this is the Raven controller. This is what is controlling the flow of our nitrogen fertilizer from the saddle tanks through that pump, through these valves, through those pipes, and then back to the conceal system. 
If you don't know what I'm talking about, that's also in the last video. So this is communicating our rate is 15 gallons per acre. Our ground speed, it knows our ground speed is five miles per hour. So it communicates with that flow meter to control the flow of the liquid fertilizer so that it's always putting on the proper rate of 15 gallons per acre. Now all these buttons on here are just for setting things up. You set your rate, you can have a number one rate, a number two rate. This is the touch screen that controls all of the tractor's functions. You can control, I mean, even the lights, which lights are turned on um, based on what switch you have turned on. Hydraulic flow through all of my hydraulic SCVs that I'm using right now. The number one is actually running the big blower that blows the seed out from the big tanks out to the rows. Number two and three are running the vacuum motors. Uh, that's those black discs out on either side of the planter. We have a left vac and a right vac. And then number four is running the hydraulic pump down there that pumps the liquid fertilizer. Okay, this is our AMVAC controller. This is in charge of applying the proper rate of dry granular insecticide. That's what's in those white boxes on the back of the planter. And each one of those units has an electric meter on the bottom of it. And this is controlling all those electric meters. You set your rate right here, and then you do your calibrations through this, and it documents all of your field coverage, and you can download those files later. So that's what we're doing with that. I tell you what, I'm going to let the sun go down just a little bit so it's not quite as bright outside. It's not super bright right now, but it'll be a lot easier to see these screens when they don't have light reflecting off them. They're a lot easier to see on camera when it starts to get dark outside. So I'll be back in about an hour to explain the rest of this stuff. And the most exciting stuff is yet to come. So don't give up on me now. I'll be right back. Wow, isn't that nice? So this is the John Deere 4640. This is the display that we use to create our guidance lines, and it tells the tractor exactly where it needs to steer to stay perfectly on those guidance lines. We are also using this screen to document the liquid fertilizer that we're running through the Raven. So we have a cable going from this to the back of this, and it's telling the John Deere 4640 where we're putting the fertilizer and how much we're putting on. And then that is automatically getting uploaded right now as we speak in real time to our My John Deere account so that we can look at that anywhere we are on our mobile devices or our computers or wherever and we can share that with our agronomy team and it's always there every year to look back on what we did. If there's some places that we missed in the field, that's documented here so we can go back in and fix that when we side dress. That's something you'll see taking place here in just about, I don't know, maybe about a month probably. Okay, moving right along, this is the Precision Planting 2020 Seed Sense. This is a Generation 2 monitor. Now, we've had this one for, I don't know, maybe six years now, I believe. This is the brain that is actually controlling the planter right now. It's controlling the seeding rate. It's controlling each individual meter. It's controlling the amount of downforce applied through the Delta Force system. And it's doing all this stuff without me having to tell it what to do while we're doing it. It's also reporting back to me some very important data as to how the planter is performing. This number right here is extremely important. That's called singulation. Singulation just means that every time one of the holes on the seed disc goes past the seed tube, it's dropping one seed and only one seed. If you look right next to it, you'll see a measure of skips and multiples. Skips is one of the holes goes past and doesn't drop a seed. Multiples is when one of the holes goes past and drops more than one seed in the exact same spot. Both of those things are really bad. We don't want to be doing that. So keeping this number as high as possible is fantastic. Spacing, this is how accurately the seeds are spaced out in the furrow. I'm pretty happy with this number. I'd like it to be above 99 but it's doing pretty well. We'll talk more later on about why it's important for your seeds to be uniformly spaced out, but just know for now that it is important, and this is telling us how we're doing on that. This is our population, how many field acres we've got done, how fast we're going. This is the vacuum reading from the left and the right side. The delta force, I set the delta force here, and I can see how it's performing over here. You want your gauge wheels to always be on the ground. If the gauge wheels ever come up off the ground, 
that means that your depth is getting shallower and then getting deeper again and then shallower again. You don't want that. We want very uniform, consistent depth. So we want our ground contact number to be as close to 100% as we can, but we don't want to be carrying a whole bunch of extra weight on the gauge wheels and smearing those sidewalls. If that's running in an automated way so that I don't have to constantly worry about it. And I'll show you on the maps on the iPad here in just a second what I'm talking about. This is really, really cool. This is the Smart Firmer. If you remember, we put seed firmers on a couple years ago. The seed firmers are those little white plastic things that run in the seed furrow right after the seed gets dropped and it just presses them down into the bottom of the furrow, makes sure that none of them get hung up on their way down, keeps your depth uniform. One of the seed firmers that we have under the planter is actually a smart firmer. That's a precision planting product and it's able to tell us our furrow moisture, our soil temperature in the furrow, our organic matter in the furrow, and then how clean our furrow is. You'll notice that it's kind of unhappy with the cleanliness of the furrow. That's because we're in chisel plowed ground with a lot of corn stalks. Now I've adjusted the row cleaners down and then up just a little bit. Maybe I'll try going up a little bit even more, not put quite so much pressure on them. Sometimes you just have to play with these systems until you start to get the result you want. Now 95, 96, I'm pretty happy with that. So maybe what I was doing was maybe I was running the row cleaners a little too aggressively and I was getting down to the point where all of that buried residue was. So maybe keeping them just a little closer to the surface is what I wanna do. But you gotta remember the closer to the surface we get, the lower this furrow moisture number is gonna get. And we don't wanna be planting in dry soil. You see right there, it was flashing yellow. We want to make sure we have enough furrow moisture for germination and to keep the seed from drying out if it gets dry the next few days. So a lot of the things that you're playing with all the time is kind of striking a balance between two things and deciding which thing is the most important at the moment. Okay, now this iPad might look kind of complicated, but the iPad is running an app called FieldView Cab and it is just showing all of these metrics in map form. So it's recording a reading on each individual row of all of the metrics that we're paying attention to down on the 2020. So you look up here, right now I'm looking at a downforce map and a singulation map at the same time. So you can just look at one map at once if you want to. Um, and all of these numbers that are displaying over here, this is just the same thing that you're seeing down here displayed on this screen. So a lot of times I push that out of the way because I'm looking at the 2020 a lot as well. And this gives me more view of the map. And I do like to watch two things at the same time. I'm watching the singulation. And if you look at the singulation map, each one of these little blue spots, that's a spot where more than one seed dropped out and each one of the red dots is a spot where it failed to drop a seed where it should have. So you can zoom in and you can see every single row on its own. That's really cool. Now over here on the downforce map, each little blue speck, that's an area where you had loss of ground contact with the gauge wheels. We don't want that to happen. We wanna keep our, keep our depth consistent, but we also don't wanna be carrying a lot of extra downforce. So I like to watch this map when I'm getting into changing soil conditions, make sure I'm not losing ground contact, but I want to make sure I'm not carrying a whole lot of extra. Let me just purposely sabotage it for a second and show you what I mean. If I put it in light auto mode, you're going to see some loss of ground contact pop up. You'll see some more green and that's good. That's optimal downforce, but you can see we're getting a lot of little blue spots. That's loss of ground contact. We don't want that. So I'll put it back into standard mode. I'm pretty happy with how it was operating in standard mode in these soil conditions. Okay, some of the other things you can look at. You can look at applied downforce. So if you look at applied downforce at the same time as downforce, this can be a bit confusing until you understand what you're looking at. So the downforce map over here, this is how much weight each set of gauge wheels is feeling pushing down on the ground. This applied downforce map is how much each hydraulic cylinder is pressing down or lifting on each row unit 
to achieve that ground contact. You'll notice we're in some kind of sandy soil in some of the spots here. We're actually getting some negative downforce. This is lift. If you look at the purple, these are areas where that row unit was actually trying to lift itself a little bit so that it wasn't carrying too much excess weight. And then you go up the gradient here, and these are some areas where it was pushing down between 250 and 338 pounds on the row just to keep it in the ground enough to keep those gauge wheels in constant contact. And it's doing that automatically all the time. I'm not having to worry about that, but I do like to monitor it so that I can make sure everything is how I want it to be. Hey, the other night when I recorded this, I totally forgot to show you something really cool on the 2020 Seed Sense monitor. Check this out. Okay, so at the beginning of the season, we told this monitor what the current price of corn is. And look at this, if we find our currently lowest performing row for singulation, look, we're losing $10.78 per acre on that row because it's not, look at that, it's doing better right now. Something happened to cause it to not singulate properly for just a little bit. It also, you can see in real time, the seeds coming out the back. Everything's going really well right now. That yellow, that was a spacing problem. Um, a red would be a severe spacing problem. Let's see if we can find another row that's currently acting up. Here, row one. You can watch it and see what's going on and look for patterns. Usually when there's something going on like that, it's kind of some sort of anomaly, like you bounced over a rock and that row is trying to regather its seeds or something went through the meter that uh, is causing it to not singulate perfectly. But you should be able to notice that if you have the same row always having trouble, the way that I do that on the iPad, if I bring up the singulation map, I'll look at the uh, chart and then it'll organize the performance of all of the rows from best to worst. And look at, they're all, they're all from 99.6 to 99.8. So there's not any issue that needs to be addressed. I just think that's really cool. When you translate things into dollars and cents and you say, wow, if I had a problem that I did not know about and I let that go on for 2,000 acres, you know, $11 an acre, really adds up if you're just a couple percent off of doing everything right. And now I hope you have a little bit better understanding of how all of these pieces of technology are working together to keep everything as uniform as possible while we're planting corn. That is the name of the game, uniformity. If there's anything here that you have more specific questions about, reach out to me in the comments section right down here below the video or DM me on Instagram or Facebook. I'll try to answer your questions as best I can. We have just been super busy. We've been going full bore. As you can see, it's dry. It's actually getting too dry. Hey, I really appreciate you guys. Thanks for riding along. I'll see you next time.